Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about side projects and good practices and processes around releasing. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are some good practices and processes for working with and releasing my side project? And the short answer is simplicity, my friend, and stability. I would say these are the two things that you should focus absolutely like, the most on. So let me explain. The reason why I say this is because I actually I've had my own side projects and I can speak a little bit from experience in in this area because I've had a few of them and I've had some learnings that I think that should be useful to you. So first and foremost, I want you to take every single tech talk, every single microservices tech talk you watched, every single functional programming tech talk that you ever heard about, every single performance tech talk that you've ever heard about, all of this stuff, all of it, throw that out the window or at the very least put it on a shelf so you can pull it out for when you want to go on the internet and argue with people or when you have some coworkers at your job that are talking about these sorts of things. For your personal project, the one and only thing that you should think about and should focus all your attention off, this is priority one, is simplicity. What I mean by simplicity is not that you create a shitty system. I mean that you should always, always ask, how can I get this to be out there live to you with users and that this thing meets their expectations so that I can start make so I can start making money from it as quickly as humanly possible and without as with as little effort as I can. Because when you are a single developer working on most likely a very small system, it's not important to have high availability, to have the bleeding edge performance that really doesn't matter because you have what? You built the whole thing in C or something like that for some reason and that means that it's super fast, right? And it took you much, much longer and it's as much, it's more hassle to maintain for some, and at the end of the day, you only have like five people visiting your application. Does that sound like a good investment? Well, at least from my perspective, no, that does not sound like a good investment. What you are after is how to get to the people that are going to use your system as quickly as possible. There are numerous examples of people. I actually have a story from my own hometown, which is kind of funny. This guy, he, uh, he, was, he was working in shipping, a shipping company, and his... Uh, his day-to-day -day job was to work with all of these different processes and he had a he, he was not a programmer he had this idea just he thought that oh this stuff that i'm doing all the time is kind of weird and all these different companies they are like docking to our hub here and like things are going out and they're coming in and maybe i could just bail, build some simple tracking app that could help with this a little bit and so he did he took a basic basic course and he was basically practically self-taught well he was self-taught if I'm if we're gonna be honest here and he in just a few months built a really 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 bad if we're talking from the perspective of we compare this thing to professional grade applications that are the stuff that the big companies build it was a shit app a complete shit app but he sold it and today he's actually running a company based on that application. It was absolutely shit. But once he actually got it sold to the company that he was working for, he could actually start a company and hire a more experienced developer to refine it and make it even better. And that's exactly what the difference between a software developer and an entrepreneur is. The entrepreneur is focused on getting the sale or getting a solution that will earn money for a company. A software developer is about the code. And this is a big problem. If you're, it's honest to God, in some cases I think that the professional software developers are a little bit worse at making it, making, creating a side business than the entrepreneurs. Because the focus can be so different depending on how and how Sell it, sell us you are about good software practices and trendy IT concepts and stuff like that. This is something that I learned the hard way because I was this exact way. I spent so long, I think it was almost one or two years, rewriting a single system into different architectures and using different solutions 
because I was just dumb. Honest to God, like I, I, I will. The only excuse I have was that I was less experienced than I am today. And today I can also tell you that I've seen another. I have an, an old. Uh, honest to God, I don't know why I didn't see it at the time. I think I was just too wrapped up in all these hypes and all of this focus on different ways of solving very complicated problems that are perfect for a company such as Google or Facebook or Netflix. But me as a single person trying to do it was just, it was just stupid. I had, I have another, I have an old teacher. He's running a successful side business as well. It's built on Java, which everybody hates for some reason. And it's from the perspective of someone like myself and most of, I think, the w w world, well, it's not a very sophisticated or very, like it's not an innovative product necessarily. It's not an amazing system, but he makes enough money so that he can, you know, he doesn't have to work if he doesn't want to. It's, he's, a, he's the only person maintaining it. It's a one man company and he is making an income and it's a passive income from just having that up and running. And that's the thing that you should focus on. Your focus should not be to use like the best system solutions like Kubernetes and microservices and like having all this infrastructure. Create the simplest thing you can build. You can use something like DigitalOcean or Heroku or whatever, the cheapest, simple, simplest thing that just allows you to offload the work of maintaining and uh, doing operations work. The less work you have to do, the better so that you can focus on one, creating a system that someone is willing to pay for. That's the most important thing. And the second thing is to just go out and market it, to do research, research to be an entrepreneur. Because it's much better for you to just create a system that does what it is supposed to be doing and then get paid for that than it is to create a super system that nobody's gonna pay you for. So the procedure that you should follow if, if there is such a thing in these early days is to just simplify everything around the producing of the code as much as possible. If you don't, if just you like use FTP to upload your stuff you, or whatever, like it doesn't matter. Just keep it as easy as possible so that you can ship code as quickly as possible and then focus most of your attention on actually making sure that you built something that people want to buy. So what I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to the release process and general tips and guidelines around having a side product, remember that you are time constrained, which means that you are the only person most likely who's going to have time to do all the things at the same time. So you need to make sure that you reduce the amount of work that you have to spend on stuff that isn't value building as much as possible. And stuff that isn't value building is using, I don't know, Kubernetes with microservices and stuff like that, because it, at, at your scale, it does not matter what you're running. As long as it's the web server or whatever you're building that can very easily accommodate basic network traffic and people can actually access the thing, then it doesn't matter what you're running. You can run on any language. It's such a low, it's, it's such a low value investment to try to optimize your system that early on. It's much better for you to get a, get a workflow where you can very quickly push some code to GitHub or whatever and then just have it auto deploy immediately. It's fine to have some downtime and you don't have to have the same considerations as these super systems. The only thing that should matter is to make that effort as low as possible so that that time that you're spending that everybody else has to hire people to do, well, that time should be invested in promoting your product to make sure and to taking new requirements to develop it to a point where you can actually make a living from it. And when you can make a living from it and maybe earn some even some more income, ideally this should be as passive as possible because if you set everything up, you basically don't have to touch the system unless something goes wrong. Well, then at some point you can do as my friend from my hometown and hire more people to do even more work. And that is how you get your business started. Have a great day.